so how does a garage startup become the most valuable company in the world? Well, Apple Computer did it by selling 93 million iPhones last year and 40 million iPads. And the only reason they didn't sell more is that they can't make them fast enough. But that relentless demand has raised uncomfortable questions about how these precious objects are made and how the people that make them are treated. A few weeks ago, the company invited me to witness its first ever third party audit of its biggest Chinese supplier, Foxconn. For the record, our parent company, Disney and Apple, have strong ties. Our CEO sits on their board, and the Steve Jobs Trust is Disney's largest individual shareholder. But I only agreed to report exactly what I saw on this the first look inside the eye factory. We arrive at dawn. Is this the entrance? No idea what to expect, but eager for a glimpse of the mysterious place that builds the stuff that fills our lives. We're met by a top Foxconn executive who refuses to confirm that inside all these buildings, they're working on top secret projects for Intel, Nintendo, Dell, and many others. There we go. But Apple has allowed him to show me how they build the world's most popular objects of desire. Be the, charming type. the ones that turn a little garage startup into a company more valuable than Exxon, a brand more beloved than any other. I'm told this is the very first time any reporter from any country has been allowed to see this. We will don static proof jackets or full bunny suits and take numerous air showers because one speck of dust could ruin an entire line. There is one obvious reason for Apple's legendary secrecy over the years. If the world sees this line, it might change the way people think in this line. Unlike any other product, the launch of a sexy new Apple gadget is a cultural event, and that cult following comes in part from a mystique cultivated brilliantly by Steve Jobs. It's really extraordinary, and I urge you to get your hands on one and see for yourself. I'll admit, I'm among the millions who bought into the idea that these are not just dependable appliances, they are works of art, carefully wrapped in pristine boxes, lovingly sold in museum-like stores. I don't know about you, but when I'm enjoying a delicious steak, knowing where it came from changes the experience. So how many steps are there? Uh, around uh, 141. 141 steps. Yeah. But it is time now to think different about Apple. Because here it is. This is where your iPhone was born, and these are the people who brought it to life. My name is Bill. Nice to meet you. I'm first struck by how young they are. Not 13 like some of the horror stories I'd heard, but 17, 18. No one looked over 30. I know many came from poor villages out in the countryside with the hope of making $2 an hour, but their haircuts prove that teen style lives everywhere. I was expecting more automated assembly, more robots, but the sleek machines that dazzle and inspire and change the lives of people 8 to 80 are mostly made by hand, after hand, after hand. Behold the camera module for the iPad. Look at how tiny and intricate this is. And get this, with two shifts, they can make 300,000 of these in a single day. It takes around five days and 325 sets of hands to assemble an iPad, they tell me. And they can turn a raw hunk of aluminum into a sleek design, complete with the bitten Apple logo at the rate of 10,000 an hour. At the end of this process, I find 27-year-old Xiao Ying, who carves the aluminum burrs from 3,000 apples every shift. What are you thinking about while you're working? A lot of times I think about how tired I am, the mother of two tells me. I think about resting. A supervisor will give the occasional order in Mandarin, but on this line, the machines do most of the talking. While the people work in silence. And they will repeat that motion and hear that fembot voice a few thousand times more before lunch. Their 12-hour shifts are broken up by two hour-long meal breaks when they march single file to a massive canteen and pay around 70 cents for a plate of meat and rice. If they eat fast enough, they can catch a few winks back at their spot on the line. 
The Foxconn executive tells me it's not exhaustion, but a Chinese post-meal tradition. So this is home. How long have you guys worked here and lived here? After 12 hours here, many head home to a nearby dorm room they share with seven other workers. There is an internet cafe and a soccer field. They even offer classes in English and other studies. But most are here to work. Most left their families to work because back home, there are few good jobs. If you ever visit the Foxconn factory complex in Shenzhen, China, you cannot miss the nets. And it is hard to get them out of your mind when you leave. They are there to keep the people who build products for Apple or Dell or Nintendo from taking a deadly leap off a factory roof. And a Foxconn executive admits that without those nets and the suicide cluster that produced them, we wouldn't be looking inside the eye factory tonight. The suicide nets went up in the spring of 2010 when nine Foxconn workers jumped to their deaths in the span of three months. A total of 18 employees took their own lives or tried to in recent years. And given the company's massive size, Foxconn's suicide rate is actually well below China's national average. One reason, Louis Wu, our executive host, said it took several months and several suicides before Foxconn and Apple were shaken into action. At the beginning, is that we see a, a few suicides, but we didn't really see that there is a cluster effect mm -hmm. right? until I think the, either the fifth or the sixth one. He so says Apple's right. number two man at the time, Tim yeah, Cook, flew to Shenzhen and helped assemble a team of psychological experts who recommended nets to make impulsive souls think twice before jumping. Foxconn also then promised to raise wages, and they opened this counseling center. And why do you think so many happened at the same time? There are many reasons, counselor Yang Chunhui tells me. Of course, some has to do with management. But they had more to do with the new generation of migrant workers from the rural areas, their state of mind, and how they cope with society. Also, it's hard to make friends here, she says. But it wasn't just the suicides that caught the world's attention. An explosion hit a Foxconn plant in Chengdu. Last year, poorly ventilated aluminum dust led to two separate explosions in iPad polishing stations, killing four, injuring 77. There is, in fact, one labor rights group in the country who claims that they tried to warn you about combustible dust before the explosions. Is that true? Do you, do you have regrets about not doing more sooner? But you ask me, you know, whether, you know, we feel we could have done a lot more or better to avert that explosion. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we were devastated. Apple takes working conditions very, very seriously, and we have for a very long time. Apple declined my repeated request to interview new CEO Tim Cook, but referred us to his statements at a Goldman Sachs investor conference last week. We don't let anyone cut corners on safety. But now more than ever, they are trying to prove that to the world. Until this year, Apple had never released the names of its suppliers. They almost doubled the number of supplier audits performed last year. And a few months ago, they decided to join the Fair Labor Association. And we were there when the head of the FLA arrived to begin the largest ever audit of Foxconn. This is not a surprise inspection. No. So how do you know they're not putting on a show for you if they know you're coming? I expect them to put on a show for us. That's normal. But our method is such that we have a bottom-up interview method that just surfaces. Over the next couple of days, everything will surface. It's only fair to note that Apple is just one of many Foxconn customers, and most of them have escaped this recent storm of bad publicity. As one of the FLA auditors explains, the biggest and most visible brands often take the heat for the entire industry. And why the timing like this? Well, we call it the Nike moment, uh, right, in, in the industry. So there was a moment for Nike in the 90s um, when they got a lot of publicity, a negative publicity. And they weren't the worst. It's probably similar like Apple. They're not necessarily worse than anybody else. Um, it's, it's just that the publicity started to build up. Part of the Fair Labor Association team scours time cards and pay records, while another uses, yes, iPads to beam the anonymous grievances of 35,000 workers to a server in New Zealand. Given the grim headlines about Foxconn in recent years, you might wonder why anyone would ever want to work there. But as our exclusive look reveals, 
China has very different values when it comes to gainful employment. Monday morning at the Foxconn Recruiting Center. And over 3,000 people have been lined up since the wee hours, all desperate to work for Apple's biggest supplier. Why do you want to work here? I heard the work is hard here, says this 18-year-old, but I want to get some experience. I ask another if she's heard about the notorious suicides at Foxconn. Does that worry you? Does that scare you? I don't think it has very much to do with the company, she says. They wait in a patient mass, hoping to land a starting salary of the promised $1.78 an hour. Unless they work 47 overtime hours a month, the Chinese government will consider them too poor to withdraw any taxes. But to this crowd, that doesn't seem to matter. Desire trumps discipline. It's a stampede. And ignoring police whistles, they rush the gates, eager to wave a national ID card across an electronic reader. Those who hear the satisfying beep are sent in. Those with bogus IDs are silently turned away. The demand for iPhones and other electronics is so high, Foxconn will hire 80% of these people today. Good news to those who travel all night by bus and are ready to move in. After three days of training, what Foxconn calls team building, the new hires will be sitting on a production line. So this is home. And many of them will pay $17.50 a month to move into a dorm like this with seven strangers. To get a sense of how this compares to their homes, we travel to a village outside the industrial town of Chengdu, where a single family might live in a room like this. Oh, that's your heat. Oh, I see. Though they have heard of Foxconn, they've never seen an iPad before. So this is what they make at Foxconn. It's called an iPad. And since the young people left to work in the factories, they say everything is better. So you, you eat better, you have more, better clothes, you more to do? Yes, they say. Everything. Wow. Meanwhile, back in the Apple lines in Shenzhen, the Fair Labor Association audit continues. You know, people are really pushing this stuff out. Apple paid $250,000 to join this group, and Apple is paying for this audit, making critics worry about a conflict of interest. But Arette Van Heerden of the FLA insists that when they publish this report, any whitewash will be obvious. What are you looking for? With behavior, traits, physical characteristics, what? Definitely. One of them is, will workers make, will they look up even? You know, we, we come in here, we're outsiders, we're uh, obviously an object of curiosity. And I want to know, can they express that curiosity? Can they steal a glance? I go into facilities where people won't look up, and they're really, really intimidated. I'm Bill. Since Apple encouraged us to approach anyone on their line, we did. What goes through your mind when you do the same thing all day like this? We met people on and off the factory complex. Did you move to here for this job? Or did on and off the record. You can be honest. And it became quickly obvious that a strange American with a camera crew only gets so much candor. So if there was one thing that you could change about your job here, what would it be? But plenty of people like Zhang Ruhua had no problem telling me that the dorms are too crowded and the trees block the sunshine and the food prices are too high. We heard the kind of complaints he'd hear at any factory or college campus. And even though wages have doubled since the suicide nets went up, most everyone complained about low pay. But in China, other than complaining, there's very little they can do about it. Right now, American-style unions don't exist here, but Louis Wu admits in the next few years they could take hold, and that would be major news. Because when 150 non-Apple Foxconn workers had demands in January, they went up to a factory roof and threatened to jump. What happened? Well, I think, first of all, um, it's not because of pay. It's part of the uh, negotiation process. But I'm very happy that, you know, everything was resolved. A sobering kind of collective bargaining right there. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. If, if Apple came to you and said, you know, out of the goodness of our heart, because we're doing so well, we want to pay everyone who touches an iPad double. Could you do that? Why not? That would be good for the employees, right? 
and also definitely good for China and good for, definitely good for us because we will have more stable workers who would love to work for you know, our company because they will get paid a lot more than anyone else.